Ready. They were designed to be the best. They met enemies face to face, endured tragedies and enjoyed victories. They went down in history due to the bravery of their crews. They are the ships that deserve to be called naval legends. The Soviet K-class submarines, nicknamed Katyusha by sailors, were created thanks to efforts of Mikhail Rudnitsky, the chief of the submarine department at the Institute of Naval Shipbuilding. At the beginning of 1935, he presented his own project of a cruiser and fleet submarine to the USSR Naval Command. The specifications of this submarine were so promising that even before the final technical project had been approved, the decision was made to construct a large series of ships of this class. The author of the project, which was sometimes nicknamed Rudnitsky's Cruiser in his honor, managed to create a ship with very extensive and varied combat capabilities that were a perfect match for the Soviet naval doctrine of that time. Specifications of K-class submarines. Length, 97.6 meters. Beam, almost 7.5 meters. Mean draft, 4 meters. Submerged displacement, 2,104 tons. The boat has a double hull. Maximum diameter of the pressure hull, 5.3 meters. Thickness of the pressure hull, 18 to 22 millimeters. The submarine is divided into seven compartments. The first and seventh, torpedo compartments with crew berths. The second, bow battery compartment. The officer's mess hall and five single cabins for the commanding officers were located on its deck. The first group of accumulator batteries was installed in the hold. The third, control room with the conning tower on top of it. The artillery magazine found its place in the compartment's hold. The fourth, aft battery compartment. The petty officer's mess hall and 24 crew bunks were on its deck the second group of batteries was installed in the hold. The fifth, diesel compartment. The sixth, electromotive compartment. Armament. Ten 533mm torpedo launchers, six at the bow and four aft, with two of them in the superstructure. Ammunition, 24 torpedoes. Artillery armament. Two 100mm B24PL dual-purpose guns, two 45mm 21K dual-purpose guns, two 7.62mm M1 removable machine guns. The boat carried 20 EP ground anchor mines, developed for fleet submarines, which could be deployed with a mining device located underneath the control room. Power plant, two diesel engines, 4,200 horsepower each. A diesel generator, 800 horsepower, two electric engines, 2,400 horsepower each, two groups of accumulator batteries, 240 elements each, maximum surface speed, 21 knots, maximum submerged speed, 10.3 knots, submergence depth, 80 meters, maximum depth, 100 meters, Cruising range at 10 knots, surfaced 7,500 miles, submerged 11.5 miles, endurance 50 days, maximum time submerged 72 hours, crew 66 people. By the summer of 1941, the Soviet submarine fleet included 212 ships, 85 in the Pacific Fleet, 67 in the Baltic Fleet, 44 in the Black Sea Fleet, 16 in the Northern Fleet. 118 of them were either under repair or at different stages of construction. The remaining 94 were complemented with crews that underwent practical training directly on them. The most important thing, a crew required time to master all the machinery. To this end, a training program was developed. The training program for submarines, adopted in 1938, consisted of 21 tasks. Here are some of them. Task 2, controlling a submarine when submerging, carrying out submerged maneuvers and surfacing. Task 13, attacking a ship sailing along an alternating course with torpedoes from a long initial range. Task 21, joint maneuvers of a group of submarines when evading the enemy. 
Ships whose crews had complemented all the tasks were considered fully combat ready. The highest certification of a submarine was to successfully complete a submerged attack against a high-speed formation of warships with anti-submarine escorts, moving along a zigzag path. The Soviet submarine fleet had very few certified subs. So the reality was that despite having a large number of boats at our disposal, only half of them, at best, were combat ready. Only two submarines were fully prepared for combat in the Baltic Sea, 19 in the Black Sea and none in the Northern Fleet. On September 17th, K-21 was commissioned into the Northern Fleet and after very tight and intensive combat training, she went out on her first war patrol. During the autumn of 1941, Katyusha's had to adapt to sailing conditions in the northern Arctic waters first of all. The Barents Sea tested the endurance of the ship and her crew on every cruise. It turned out that surface speed was very much dependent on the sea conditions. At Force 5 roughness, which is quite characteristic for Arctic latitudes, speed dropped twofold, while during a storm, a submarine could list up to 50 to 55 degrees. To help submarines stay on course and maintain their position, a system of automatic movement stabilization was installed. It was able to adjust both course and depth and was also called the autopilot. However, the electric motors of this system were too noisy and sailors would often disable it during missions and switch to manual control. For the German troops in the far north, shipments by sea were virtually the only source of supplies. That's why these routes were the primary target of Soviet submarines throughout the war. However, the enemy didn't conduct large ocean convoys near Norwegian shores, and the K-class cruiser submarines were designed to hunt exactly for this type of convoy. Active transportation was carried out by small groups of ships with modest tonnage that sailed along the shoreline, taking cover in fields. Often, these were common motorboats and mobilized fishing vessels, and it made no practical sense to spend torpedoes on them. In September 1941, on their way back from a combat cruise, the commanding officer responsible for artillery on K-2 suggested firing a blank shot from their main gun when entering the harbor, in honor of their victory. Later, this tradition was adopted by all submarines of the Northern Fleet. It's worth noting that the K-class submarines scored their first and last victory with artillery fire. In terms of artillery armament, Katyusha's surpassed all Soviet submarines of that time. Their 100mm dual-purpose guns were even sometimes used for anti-aircraft defense at home bases. Of course, these submarines found the main application for their guns at sea and near enemy coasts. The events that occurred at the end of 1941 during a combat cruise of K-3, when she was helmed by Lieutenant Commander Malafeyev, presents a very characteristic example of this absence of resources and means to verify the results of an attack. When newspapers or radio informed people of the victories of the Soviet submariners, they didn't require verification anymore. In 1942, when the Red Army suffered a number of crushing defeats on other fronts, the Soviet people badly needed to know that somewhere at least, the enemy was getting successfully hit. Лодка пробралась к вражеским берегам во внутренние воды врага. Торпеды атаки. Аппараты тут. He launched four torpedoes at the German task force at battleship Tirpitz. Точные советские торпеды. 
На рубке каждой лодки число потопленных ею фашистских кораблей. On June the 18th, 1942, K-21 started her fifth raid. For 10 days, the submarine cruised along the northern coastline of Norway, searching for targets. During the night of June 28, Lunin received an order to move to another location, close to Cape Nordkin, to cover convoy PQ-17. Several days later, the Allies learned that a task force of surface ships, headed by Tirpitz, had set sail. The largest German ship was a highly valuable piece on the board, and by losing this piece, the Kriegsmarine would lose their advantage in the north. Both opposing parties knew that, which was why the German command valued concealment and secrecy most of all while planning their operations. The Allies, in their turn, took all possible measures to detect Tirpitz. In the evening of July 4, convoy PQ-17 received the fatal order to spread out. The German squadron wasn't aware of this and continued along their previous course. By the second half of the next day, the squadron had neared Cape Nordkin. Meanwhile, in the north, far away from K-21, German aviation and submarines were pillaging convoy PQ-17. Soviet destroyers left the northern fleet bases and aircraft took off from the coastal aerodromes to search for the enemy. The radiogram from Lunin was still being decoded on the coast, which is why nobody knew the exact location of the German task force. Nevertheless, everyone understood that they had to be detected at any cost. At 1916, the German squadron was detected by the crew of the Il-4 airplane from the 2nd Guards Composite Air Regiment. Severe weather conditions obstructed the flight. Low clouds and fog made it almost impossible to detect the enemy ships. But the persistence of Soviet pilots in fulfilling their mission was rewarded. The pilot noticed a small gap between the clouds, plotted the course in that direction, and found himself right above the enemy forces. The scout immediately sent a message about detecting a German squadron comprising 11 ships and following a course of 65 degrees at a speed of 10 knots. The error in determining the squadron's speed played a crucial part in the coming events. The text of the decoded radiogram from K-21 and data from the reconnaissance aircraft led to the conclusion that the speed of the German squadron had been reduced because one of the ships had received serious damage. It proved that Lunin's attack had been successful. In the evening of July 8, the Soviet Information Bureau transmitted a message saying that the submarine under the command of Captain 2nd Rank Nikolai Lunin had scored two torpedo hits on German battleship Tirpitz. The news about the torpedo attack on the largest German ship was published not only in the main Soviet papers, but a corresponding note was also released in the foreign press. This was why, the following day, when K-21 arrived at the base, the whole world was already aware of the heroic deed of the submarine and her commander. By the fall of 1942, after the events of the fifth raid had been reviewed in detail, Nikolai Lunin and his submarine K-21 were decorated with the Order of the Red Banner. Over time, that attack had created a plethora of speculations and assumptions, and finally became a legend that still causes many arguments. It's all clear from the historical perspective. The specific facts, which are now available to everyone who's eager to study them, undeniably suggest that the attack took place, but that it was unsuccessful. However, the attack itself was a heroic deed in any case. Lunin did everything he could and everything he had been taught. The first torpedo attack failed, but he still took a risk and attempted a second attack. That was the first and only attack by our submarines on large enemy surface ships. In November 1943, Nikolai Lunin became commander of the 1st Submarine Division of the Northern Fleet. Six months later, he was sent to the Military Naval Academy. He graduated from the academy after the war ended. Submarine K-21 had seven more war patrols, primarily for laying mines. At the time of her last raid, the conning tower of the submarine was decorated with the number 17, the number of her victories. They were designed to be the best. They met enemies face to face, endured tragedies and enjoyed victories. 
They went down in history due to the bravery of their crews. They are the ships that deserve to be called Naval Legends.